what if the universe isn't driven by dark energy after all? This week, a radical rethink of cosmic expansion. The most pristine star at our galaxy's edge. Martian ice as a time capsule for life. And two spacecraft slicing through an interstellar comet's tail. All this and more. This is Astro News Weekly. Let's dive in. A new attempt to explain the accelerated expansion of the universe, a theoretical alternative to dark energy. Extending Einstein's general relativity with Finsler geometry yields accelerated expansion in vacuum without inserting a lambda term. The result comes from new Finsler-Friedman equations derived by the team. Researchers at University of Bremen, Germany, and Transylvanian University of Brasov, Romania, have published their findings in Journal of Cosmology and Astroparticle Physics. By generalizing space-time to a Finsler framework, the cosmological equations naturally produce late-time acceleration and no exotic energy component required. The approach also claims a better treatment of kinetic gases in cosmology. If this idea survives testing, it means the universe's speed-up comes from the shape of space-time itself, not from a separate dark energy substance. What's next? Check this idea against our best sky measurements. How fast space expands, how galaxies bunch together, and how gravity bends light. If it fits what we see, it stays. If not, we move on. Most pristine Milky Way star astronomers have spotted a red giant with the lowest heavy element content ever seen. So metal poor, it looks almost untouched since the first stars lit up. It popped up in survey data and was confirmed with follow-up spectroscopy. The star sits near the edge of the Milky Way, and its motion hints it likely came in from the large Magellanic Cloud. Here's the twist. Unlike many ultra-poor stars, this one isn't carbon-rich. Both iron and carbon are rock bottom making its overall composition the most pristine on record, consistent with debris from one powerful early supernova. It's basically a clean chemical fingerprint from the universe's first generations. Why it matters? The single star tightens the screws on how the first low-mass stars formed. Its chemistry points to dust, helping gas cool and fragment in the young universe, explaining how tiny, long-lived stars could form when heavy elements were scarce. It also gives us a local benchmark to interpret those extremely metal-poor galaxies JWST sees far away. What's next? Get deeper spectra to nail down key elements, then hunt for more near-pristine siblings in and around the LMC. Map these fossils against distant JWST galaxies to calibrate what pristine really means across cosmic time. Mars life in a frozen time capsule. Here's a simple game-changing clue for Mars life hunts. In the lab, biomolecules sealed inside pure water ice survived Mars-like radiation for tens of millions of years, far longer than in dusty ice. In plain terms, if life ever touched Mars, its chemical traces are most likely to last in clean, low-dust ice rather than mixed, dirty ice. The team, researchers from NASA and Penn State, recreated polar subsurface Mars conditions and froze samples two ways, pure ice versus ice plus soil. Then they bathed them in Mars-level radiation. The result was stark. The pure ice samples protected the biology far better while the soil mixed ones degraded much faster. Why this matters is obvious for mission planning. If you're drilling for signs of ancient life, don't just go where the ice is, go where the ice is clean. That means picking sites with low dust and tuning instruments for subtle, well-preserved traces, not just fresh ones. What's next is straightforward. Map out pockets of high purity ice using radar and thermal data. 
design contamination-proof ways to core, store, and analyze that ice, and use radiation chemistry models to set expectations, how old a biosignature could be and still show up. Point the drills at the cleanest ice you can find, and your odds get a lot better. Two spacecraft may cross interstellar comet 3i Atlas's ion tail. Here's a rare shot at sampling something truly alien. The interstellar comet 3i Atlas is swinging through the inner solar system, and its ion tail could sweep right across the flight paths of two spacecraft. A recent analysis flags a short window around late October into early November when ESA's HERA and NASA's Europa Clipper may pass through that tail region, right as the comet's activity peaks near October 29th. Think of the ion tail as a long, invisible windsock made of charged gas, blown straight away from the sun. HERA looks to be in place first, but it wasn't built to directly sniff that plasma. Europa Clipper, though, carries the right kind of sensors, so if conditions cooperate, it could try a once-in-a-lifetime taste test of interstellar material drifting through our neighborhood. Whether mission teams can pivot in time is the big question, given operational constraints. Why this matters? We've never sampled the charged tail of an interstellar visitor up close. Even a quick pass could tell us how that gas is made and how it interacts with the solar wind clues to what small, icy bodies are like beyond our solar system. And if neither spacecraft can pull it off, ESA's JUICE will still take remote looks in early and late November, so we won't come away empty-handed. What's next? Eyes on the clock and the space weather. If teams can align pointing and timing while the tail is strong, we might get the first in-situ glimpse of an interstellar comet's plasma environment. If not, the opportunity will pass. But it will also sharpen plans for the next interstellar visitor. JWST confirms record energetic GRB. Imagine a cosmic explosion so powerful it lit up for most of a day, flaring again and again. That's GRB 250702b. Astronomers pointed JWST at the faint galaxy behind it and nailed down its distance, which lets us do the math. The result? This burst now ranks as the most energetic explosion we've ever recorded. How did they crack it? JWST spotted the host galaxy's fingerprint in infrared light, clean lines that fix how far away it is, roughly halfway back in cosmic time. With that distance in hand, the total energy shoots off the charts. Even stranger, the host looks massive and dusty, not the typical home for long gamma-ray bursts, which adds to the mystery. Why it matters. This event pushes GRB physics to the limit. Any model has to explain not just the sheer power, but also the marathon length, hours of activity instead of a quick flash. Is this a monster star collapsing in an unusual environment? or something more exotic about the engine that drives the jets? What's next? More eyes on the afterglow. JWST and ground-based telescopes will keep watching for fading light that can reveal the blast surroundings, while theorists stress test ideas for how a jet can stay this powerful for so long. Either way, GRB 250702B becomes the new benchmark every future burst will be measured against. JWST's sharpest image of Galaxy M87. JWST's infrared camera has delivered the sharpest view yet of M87 and its famous jet. The images resolve the bright knots along the main jet in remarkable detail and, crucially, reveal a faint C-shaped counterjet on the opposite side of the black hole. It's the first clear infrared confirmation that links what radio and optical slash X-ray observatories have been hinting at for years. Published in early October by Roeder and colleagues, the work shows the hotspot HST-1 splitting into substructures and uses the newly seen counterjet to gauge how symmetrical the outflow really is. 
That symmetry informs how tightly the jet is collimated and how particles are accelerated across the spectrum. Why it matters. Seeing both the jet and the counterjet sharpens estimates of black hole spin and tests magnetic field models for launching and steering the flow. It also feeds the bigger picture of AGN feedback. How jets heat and regulate gas in massive galaxies like M87, shaping future star formation. What's next? Coordinated follow-ups across radio, infrared, optical, and X-ray to fit spectra and polarization. Plus, time series checks for knot variability. With additional JWST passes, teams can test for helical wiggles or instability-driven ripples and tighten constraints on the jet-counter-jet brightness ratio. From a universe that may not need dark energy to a relic star on the Milky Way's edge, and clues to life locked in Martian ice. This has been Astro News Weekly. If you found this useful, tap subscribe, leave a like, and share it with a fellow space nerd. We'll be back next week with fresh discoveries and mission updates. Until then, clear skies and keep looking up.